Hi everyone, second video then on binomial expansion. Let's recap what we've done so far. So the formula, what's the point of binomial expansion? Well, for C2 purposes, the point is to prevent us expanding loads and loads of brackets. But then the grand scheme of things, the C4 binomial expansion is much more than that. It helps us to approximate curves by putting it into a polynomial. So any curve can be expressed as a polynomial, i.e. an ascending pa power of a, a, a series that, you know, uh, has an ascending powers of x in it. That's a polynomial of fourth degree, right? <clears throat> uh, and the formula for it was, if you have a plus b to the power of n, this is n choose 0, a to the power of n, b to the power of 0, plus n choose 1, a to the power of n take 1, b to the 1, plus n choose 2, a to the power of n take 2, b to the squared, plus, and then any general one, n minus r, b to the r. And as you know, it's symmetrical, isn't it? So the last term will be n c n, a to the power of 0, b to the n from Pascal's triangle. Remember all of our, you know, in honesty, if, if someone asked me to expand like 3 plus 2x to the 5, I would just quickly do my Pascal's triangle and then uh, to me that's a lot quicker. So, I, so if you, what did I say? 1 plus 10x to the 5, yeah, or something like that. So 1 plus 10x to the 5, I instantly know there's a 1 in there, and it's going to be 1 to the 5. So 1 plus next number, 5, 1 to the 4, 10x to the 1, plus 10, there's my 10, 1 to the power of 3, 10x squared, plus 10, 1 squared, 10x cubed, plus 5, 1, 4, 10x, 1, whoops, <coughs> 1 to the power um, so yeah, 5, and then we've got uh, 1 to the power of 1, 10x to the 4, plus 1, there's our last 1 here, 1 to the power of 0, 10x to the power of 5. Do you see? It's quicker than using the formula, but my point is that if in the formula you were asked to do to the power of 20 or something, I don't want to do Pascal's triangle. 20 times it's just silly and also questions will only ask really up to x cubed so it's easier just to use the formula right so i really recommend you use the formula but it is useful to know where this stuff comes from theory of combinations and factorials remember that's what that n choose r was about so this section here what is this n choose r n choose r remember that describes the number of unique ways you can pick r number of things from a total population with n number of things so this was n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial this is useful and we'll talk about why <coughs> because it saves you a lot of time so let's say if i had 3 minus 4x to the 12 and it's asking here what the coefficients of x to the 5 and x to the 7 would be. It's say I don't have to expand everything out, do you see? That's a waste of time. I shouldn't do that. If I know my formula, though, if I know the fact that n choose r, a to the power of n take r, uh, b to the power of r, if I know that, then I can do this quite easily. I don't have to expand everything. So if I want the coefficients, the numbers next to x to the 5, then I'm looking at, so x to the 5, I'm going to have n is always my power. So 12, choose, 5 is the power I'm looking for, a is 3, and b, remember that b is that whole minus 4x. Be very careful with that. Um, my a was 3, and that's to the power of n minus r. So 12 minus 5 is 7. And then I'm left with the 5 that I wanted, right? So therefore, this will give me... Let's do that. So 12 choose 5. 
whoops, 12, choose 5, that's 7, 9, 2, 3 to the power of 7, 2, 1, 8, 7, minus 4, all to the power of 5, is minus 1, 0, 2, 4, x to the 5, so the coefficient of x to the 5 is all of that times each other. So times 792 times 2187. So a massive number, 17736744496. Do you see? Whereas if I wanted x to the 7, I would go x to the 7, that's 12 to 7. 3 to the power of 12 minus 7 is 5, minus 4x to the 7. You see, it's quite quick, isn't it? If I wanted 5 minus x, and I've got that to the 20, if it was asking me for the coefficient of x to the 12, let's say, x to the 12, I have n choose r, so n is 20, choose what I'm looking for, 12, 5 is my a, 5 to the power of 20 uh, minus 12 is 8, and minus x, remember the whole thing, the whole thing in there, if you forget the minus, it's game over. And then we've got the power that I'm looking for, which was 12. So you can see the coefficient is going to be 20, choose 12, times by 5 to the power of 8, it's going to be massive. Uh, and minus 1 to the power of 12 is positive. So coefficient, remember the coefficient does not have x to the 12 in it, does it? Because the coefficient means the number next to x to the 12. So 4.92070312525 times 10 to the power of 10. Okay, there's the usefulness of it. Let's, and the actual formula for it, that just tells you where it's come, that n choose r equals n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial, that's just telling you where it comes from. Okay, example two. <clears throat> so, find the first three terms in ascending power of x. This is an exam question then of 3 plus bx to the 5. And what's the first three terms? And b is non-zero. So, b does not equal zero. So, 3 plus bx to the 5 equals, let's do it. So, n choose zero. So, 5 choose zero of 3 to the power of 5 bx to the power of 0, plus 5 choose 1, 3 to the power of 4, bx to the 1, plus 5 choose 2, 3 to the 5, uh, 3 to the 3, bx squared plus dot 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 dot, because it only asks for three terms. So 5 choose 0 is 1, which we'd expect from Pascal's triangle, 3 to the power of 5 is 2, 4, 3 plus 5 choose 1 is 5, again from Pascal's triangle I know that, but just use your calculator, that's fine. So that's plus 405x times b, so 405bx, and then 5 choose 2 is 10 times by 3 cubed, uh, plus 270, all b and x is squared, so b squared x squared. Done. Now, given that in this expression, the coefficient of x squared is twice the coefficient of x, find the value of b. Well, the coefficient of x is 405b, and the coefficient of x squared is 270b squared, and we know that that thing is the same as two lots of this thing. So, two lots of that. Do you agree? 405b, two lots of it the coefficient of x squared. So, just going to double check that one. 5 choose 2 times by 27. Yeah, 275. So therefore, as b is non-zero, that means I can divide by b. That's very important. Otherwise, I would have to factorize. In fact, in fact, screw this. We are going to factorize because it's bad habits. Um, to divide by b. So we'll take that factor of b out. So therefore b equals 0, which it can't, and also b is going to be 810 over 270, which is 3. So b must be 3. Last example then. Find the first four terms in the ascending power of x of this thing. 
where A is a constant. Okay, no problem. So just use that formula again. So n choose 0, so 7 choose 0 of 1 to the power of 7, ax to the 0 plus 7 choose 1, 1 to the power of 6, ax to the 1, 7 choose 2, 1 to the 5, ax squared, plus 7 choose 3, 1 to the 4, ax cubed. That's the first four terms, and therefore that equals 7 choose 0 is 1, so that's a 1 plus 7 choose 1 is 7 times by 1, so that's 7ax. 7 choose 2, notice it's going to be the same as Pascal's triangle. So 21a squared x squared, be careful with that, it's all squared. And finally, 7 choose 3, 35a cubed x cubed. So we are done. B, given that the coefficient of x squared in this expansion is 5 to 5, find the possible values of a. So the coefficient of x squared is the number next to x squared, so that's 21a squared, so 21a squared must be 5 to 5, and therefore a squared is 5 to 5 over 21, and therefore a must be plus or minus the square root of that. So square root 5 to 5 over 21 is 5 plus or minus 5. Yes. Cool. So a equals plus or minus 5. That's the end of binary expansion for us.